Hello, welcome back to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, we are going to continue to work on our platformer circle object here. And we are going to use the new input system. So we are going to integrate what we have done on the last video to this circle flow graph and also implement the touch screen controller. And this is what we are going to have by the end of this video. So now we can move using the keyboard. And we can also move this using the touch controller here. As you can see, I'm dragging this button here. And we can also jump by pressing this button. So without further ado, let's start working on it. Now let's continue integrate the new input system with our circle object here. And here, as you can see on the circle flow graph, we are still using the old input system, the get axis and the get button down here. And this won't work as of this moment here because I've already changed the player settings using the new input and already imported the new input system in the package manager. And if you want to follow this tutorial, make sure you also import the on-screen controls here. I've already imported this. And if you already import this package, you will see this samples folder here. And we will have this on-screen controls folder. Inside, we will have a prefabs for the touch screen control, the stick and the button control. So first we need to modify our previous flow, which is the new input flow here, this one. So let's start modify this. I'm going to convert this flow into a super unit. So in order to do that, I'm going to remove the update event and I'm going to add an input node here, the in nesting one. And for this input, I'm going to add one control input and this will be the in. And I'm going to add one value input. And this will be the input object. And for the type, we need to change this to input interface. Okay, so now we need to remove this get variable. And we want to connect this input object with this slot here on the expose input interface unit. And for the in, we want to connect this to the normalize here. And now we want to delete the bool compare to because we won't be using it again. And now we need to add an output unit. And let's just create one control output. And let's just call this exit or out. And for the value output, we need to add three different output variable. The first one will be the direction. And this will be a type of vector two. And then we also need to output the jump pressed and let's set this also to boolean and the last one we need to output the fire pressed and this will be also a boolean okay so now we have this output unit set up let's just connect the normalize to the out nodes here and for the jump i'm going to change the dictionary with the on button down dictionary here so i'm going to connect the on button down to the dictionary slot under the dictionary get item unit and for the fire let's just also change the on button down now we can connect the output of the jump press and the fire press to this output here so let's just connect this to the jump press and let's just connect the fire to the fire press okay so now we have a working super unit for the new input we can select the circle and now we can safely delete the input get axis and also the input get button down here I'm going to also delete the start and now let's just drag the new input unit here to the graph here and we need to define the input object so this is exactly like the last video we can just create a object variable here on the inspector i'm going to call this input object and for the type i'm going to search for the input interface and we need to create another game object here and let's just call this input and let's add the input interface script and now if we select the circle again we need to insert the type again because if we didn't put the value then sometimes if we use custom class here it gets reset to null so let's just pick input interface again and i'm going to drag the input here okay so now it should work and here under the graph if we go to the object variable we will see the input object that we've just created drag this and let's just connect this to the input object here 
and we want to also connect the update flow to the in of our new input super unit and let's just connect the out to the factor 2 new unit here okay so now to drive the movement here we need to pass the x value from the direction vector to this a slot here so it gets multiplied by the speed and then it will drive the x value of our vector here so I'm going to drag this into an empty area here and then browse vector and below here I'm going to pick the x get value and we can pass the value to the slot a of our formula here and for the jumping we need to pass the jump press boolean value to the b slot of our n operator here so let's just connect this here okay so this should work and now let's save our scene and give it a try sorry there is an error here with the super unit new input here i forgot to connect the direction value so let's just open this and we need to pass the left analog here to the direction and the value of our left analog will be normalized because we are using this normalized unit here okay so let's go back to the circle flow graph here and now let's give it a try one more time okay there you go we don't have error anymore and i'm going to try to press the a and d button and as you can see now we can we can move the character and we can also jump using spacebar and now we want to integrate the touch control ui so in order to do that let's just create a new ui canvas and i'm going to set the screen scaler to full hd for the resolution and now let's pick the the stick prefab and the button prefab so i'm going to drag the stick one here under the canvas and for the button i'm going to also drag this button here and now let's change the size of the button because it's too small now so i'm going to change this to 250 by 250 and for the stick i'm going to also change this to 250 by 250 and if you go to the scene here let's just adjust the position of our button and let's change the anchor to the nearest position of our button so it stick at that position regardless of the resolution and now for the stick if we scroll down in the inspector here you see that the control path has been set to the left stick so we don't need to change this because if we open our basic control asset you see that the left analog is mapped to the left stick gamepad so the stick will trigger the left analog value because we are controlling the left stick gamepad and for the button here we need to change this to a jump button which is a spacebar or if we are going to use the gamepad then we need to change this to the button south okay i'm going to change the text here and let's just hide the second text here another thing that we need to change is the event system and here as you can see that we have this warning because we are using the new input system and this component still relies on the old input manager so let's just replace this by pressing this button here and now we need to make sure that we drag our basic control asset to this slot here and this is still connected to the default input actions and let's just drag this here and this is why we copy the ui action maps on the last video so this input actions will also work with the this input system ui input module okay i'm going to save the scene again and let's give it a try okay so now if i drag this button here you see that our character starts to move and if i press jump it will also jump and we can only jump once so other routine or other code that we've defined in our flow graph doesn't get interrupted when we replace the new input here so thanks a lot for watching and if you like this video hit that like button and do subscribe and don't forget press that notification button to get more notification from my channel see you on the next video